code. All right, welcome to the CES meeting after our month long hiatus. Welcome back, everyone. Um, today on the agenda, we have two topics pertaining to Shadow Realms, and I believe these are um, Matthew, did you enter these into the into the agenda? The yeah, second one, I believe the first one is Leo's. Leo, please take it yeah. away. Yeah, um, I can give an, an introduction of what's going on. I just uh, two uh, two topics that have been raised, um, and they are definitely uh, topics that would need consensus and. Uh, we intend to go to the TC39 meeting after we have an informed uh, decision at this meeting here, um, or if we need more meetings, uh, but we definitely need like informed uh, decision. Uh, the first one is um, a gap that, we, that was found in uh, the specs, the stage three specs where we create the wrapped function but we did not specify anything uh, about uh, wrapped functions, name and length properties. Um, there are some ergonomics. Is my audio and video working or at least the audio? You're audible, you are mm -hmm. invisible. Yeah, sorry, I don't, yeah, I, I don't have a camera. Should, should I try even to, to use a camera here? Um, thanks. I just saw like people freezing and <laughs> turning off their cameras. Um, so it was not specified uh, what to do with the name and length of the wrapped functions when uh, the import value or the evaluation of uh, the, the evaluation result from the uh, shadow realm evaluate uh, ends in a callable. So we received the wrapped function, uh, but what is their name and length? So the question here is more on what it should be. I currently have a pull request with some pre-work done leading to one direction, but also like it's not exactly the direction that I, uh, that is my favorite. Uh, the current pull request is saying, uh, is getting the same uh, uh, steps, is cloning the steps from function uh, bind, function prototype bind, and it's currently setting the name of the wrapped, uh, wrapped function with a prefix wrapped space and the name of the function from the other realm. Uh, remember uh, that like the name property is not writable, but it's, it is configurable. So kind of like it's user, um, it, it, it's able to, uh, like user customization is possible uh, in both ways, in both realms somehow, like uh, if you don't have any control. Um, um, and uh, the current option, it follows the same steps from function prototype bind. It actually creates an abstraction that should be reused by function prototype bind, uh, adding the prefix uh, wrapped space to the name. And it does not account or does not try to observe what's the current name of the function. So if you send uh, a function back and forth as you always create a new wrapped, you don't try to evaluate or dig, um, dig box the wrapped function, you always create a new one. So if you send like a hundred times, you're gonna have like a hundred wrapped prefixes unless you treat the name. Um, for what I discussed internally at Salesforce with Kariti and Rick, we have no uh, need for this prefix. And we kind of like, we don't love the idea of using wrapped as a public uh, to, to become a, like out of the specs user level name feature. Like we see no reason to, to set that into stone. Like wrapped is just like spec language. Uh, the concept of like something is called wrapped doesn't need to go to the language, but it resides on, only in the specs for now. If we do this prefix, we kind of like, we might be setting into stone the name of wrapped functions. Um, um, so my, uh, my position as a preference is to just like, copy the name from uh, the, the target function from the other realm, 
and copy the basic length as uh, as a little bit of an integer uh, value, uh, and name being uh, and name also like being a string value only, and that's it. Uh, with no prefix, I think that I, I also might end up being a little bit more performatic, but like very into the de details. Um, yeah, this is my suggestion. Questions? I have some several questions. Sorry. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, what it? What does? Um, uh, first of all, what does bind do if you bind a bound function? Uh, bind gets only a string name, discards anything else, uh, gets only a string name from the target function, and uh, prefix it with bound space. If so you if you bind, bind it, yeah, go ahead. If you bind it 10 times, you're going to have bound, bound, bound 10 times. Really? Wow. Yes. Okay. Um, now, the what does a uh, function dot prototype dot two string dot call on a wrapped function do? Um, it prints like uh, it as far uh, as I understand it's printing. Oh, go ahead. Um, a function prototype two string is going to actually dump the native code like custom host specific wrapper. So yep. they usually aren't executable. It may or may not show the name. It's not clear that they're banned on showing the name. I'm sorry, when you say the host, are you talking host specific? I don't understand. The, okay, the, me, the, the spec allows only two possibilities. Um, one is a original source code. And the other one is the 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 very specific syntax with the open curly open square bracket uh, native function or whatever uh, close square bracket close curly. So we're talking about the thing here. Uh, there's function native code, which is what it generates. Um, that's the result um, in engines. I'm not sure. Are they prohibited from returning anything else now? I know at one point they were not. I believe they are prohibited, and I believe they've been prohibited for years. It might be years. I'm remembering me doing bad stuff in IE6. IE6, wow. You were around. I knew. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, um, so, so, Mark, yeah. um, currently in uh, Chrome, just to reproduce, like if I have a function fn, uh, which name, uh, which name is fn, and if I create a bound function of it called mm -hmm. b, uh, any name, like I'm calling it b. If I do the function prototype to string dot call on b, I only get an anonymous function, like a, a function with no name and uh, the native code inside. This is the current behavior uh, in Chrome. Okay, by, by native code, we mean the open curly, open square bracket, native space it's function the, or whatever. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Um, so what, it, what, what do we currently, according to the current spec, uh, current draft spec for uh, Shadow Realms, what does function prototype to string dot call on a wrapped function uh, uh, return? I'm not sure if we have anything more specified on the name for the uh, wrapped function, but I am expecting the same output for a wrapped function. If we do like the two string dot call on a wrapped function to give like a function uh, with no name and native code. Okay. So um, checking the spec, the native code thing is allowed to have a name. Yeah. Yeah, the native so, code thing uh, is also, yeah. Like setting expectation for the browser behavior only, but yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and what does what does bind do on length? Um, sorry, I need to refresh my mind. What's the question? What does bind do on what? 
Lynch. Pretty sure it preserves. Um, not entirely. No. Yeah, a normal get. I would expect bind subtracts from the length. Uh, no, uh, so that's the thing I just re remembering here uh, and looking at the code. That's why I, I needed more time. Um, uh, it has, uh, it looks for has own property length, only accounts own properties. Uh, if it's true, it gets the length property. And uh, uh, after getting the length property, it sets, um, it only copies the length uh, property, the value of the length property, if the value is a number. It okay. discards any other values. Um, if the value is not a number, it sets the value of the bound function to zero. Mm -hmm. If it's an object, it's, if it's a number object, it, it sets the new length to zero. If it, do, if it is a number, it does check for infinity, et cetera. And, and if it's subtracted, I just posted uh, in, in, in the chat. At least that's what the view is good. It does subtract? I, yeah. I'm getting a length of zero uh, for a bound function where I bound an argument. Right. Every okay. argument you supply reduces the, the resulting length of, by one subject okay. to clipping. Good, good. And if you only supply this, since this isn't counted in argument length, I presume that that, that case does not subtract. Correct. Okay. So um, uh, I think that that um, I think that the the bound 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 behavior is very unfortunate. Um, and in retrospect. Uh, I, I think that if if I had been aware of that at the time, I probably would have uh, argued for some some logic to prevent it from nesting like that. Um, uh, for bound functions, it doesn't matter that much because the typical use case doesn't keep rebinding it. For wrapped functions, the typical use case will keep wrapping it. Uh, uh, and in fact, not actually wrap it when it wraps it. Uh, because um, uh, if, you know, a wrap, a, a um, wrapping of a wrapping of function foo is behaviorally identical to uh, the, the final wrapping of the function foo. The fact that it's going through an intermediate wrapper is actually not observably part of the semantics in any way, uh, it sounds like, except for this wrapping of the name. Um, so uh, what, so, so, here, so let's start with the following question. Uh, if well, we change- it, uh, Hold on one sec. It's not uh, part of the behavior at execution of the function. However, it was the behavior at the creation of the function. This is yes. set to at the creation. Yeah, right. But the question is, okay. If we specified that the semantics of creating a wrapper of a wrapped function was that since the wrapped function knows the original function, if we specify, if we, it, would there be any observable difference other than the name, if we specified that the result of wrapping a wrapped function is that you got a new wrapper of the original function? I thought there, we discussed at some point there might be regarding the uh, observability of the lifetime of the realm or in revocation possibly in the future. Oh God, this, the, the observability of lifetime is just always coming back to bite me. Um, other than observability of lifetime, observability of lifetime, there's, there's you know, we're trying to, to do this very, very delicate dance around implementation freedom uh, versus um, uh, strong enough constraints that you can write meaningful programs. Yeah. Um, so, so let, 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 so let me say, aside from, um, aside from observability of garbage collection lifetime through weak references, aside from that, uh, is there any observable consequence of change uh, and aside from the double wrapping of the name, is there any observable consequence of saying that a 
wrapping of a wrapped function creates a new a new wrapping of the original function. I'm going to answer very quick. I think we talked about a uh, being able to introduce revocability in the future, but I, I don't know. That would be the only thing I can think of. Okay. So yeah, I, re I remember the revoc revocability thing, and and uh, I think I might I might uh, certainly participate in that discussion. And yeah, we don't have that now. Uh, and if we had it, you know, if we had it, it would be it would be um, uh, via something new being introduced that um, that uh, beyond what's in there now. So I think the answer is yes, they are equivalent. Now let's let's go back to the lifetime issue. I think Leo has his uh, hand raised. Okay, let me, Leo. Can I just uh, finish the sentence on lifetime, then I'll turn it over to you. Um, so on lifetime. Uh, if we decided that the wrapping created a new wrapper of the original, that would provide specs uh, more freedom that they're likely to require, you know, they're likely to actually not keep the entire chain around if the lifetime is the only thing that requires it, because that's really onerous. Uh, from an implementation perspective, if you can otherwise shorten these chains. So I think in fact, implementations will want to always shorten the chains, in which case the, we should not demand more from that on lifetimes. And if we only demand the uh, lifetime corresponding to the shortened chain, uh, then any implementation that doesn't shorten uh, will still conform to that looser spec. Uh, so, so I think I'm in favor of changing the spec in that way. Okay, Leah. So, sorry, just to 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 fully understand, you you're favoring changing the spec for the name of wrapped functions to to well, have no, the, the, the... I, I, I'm I'm in favor of changing the spec for wrapping. Yeah. To say that when you wrap a function, what you mm -hmm. get is a if you if you if you're wrapping a wrapped function, what you get is a new wrapping of the original function. Of the original function. Original function. And I, I, there, and and therefore the the if the original function is named foo, then the name of the wrapped function is still just wrapped foo, not wrap wrapped foo. Okay. Um, problem with that. I, I I will. I I think this. Uh, I'm not complaining, and please <laughs> hold me until I finish this. Uh, I think this is uh, a special treatment, but uh, I think it's fine because the next topic will be about a special treatment and uh, like observing that the object is a special object. So the, this object is a wrapped function. So let's give it a special treatment. Let's get the target and create a new wrapped function. So. In this sense, I think it's going to be fine. Um, although I have just another comment uh, about uh, the wrapped, uh, the wrapped functions. Uh, one of the things that we observe, like we, we try to observe, like to, to just like rough analysis, and uh, I believe we are not going to be uh, like we don't have use case for transferring uh, the same wrapped functions. Uh, back and forth. It's more on um, the execution as uh, Matthew has uh, mentioned. It's more like uh, grabbing one function to execute it uh, many times, but not like sending the function back and forth many times. Um, and uh, still this name is user configurable. Uh, whenever I have this rep function, the name is user configurable. So I can delete and set another name, uh, remove prefix or create many wrapped prefixes like create the, the, the name like and uh, try to create an absurd amount of wrapped, 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 wrapped. Um, it, yeah. I a, think so in it, this- I, I think this points to a problem uh, with the unwrapping. Um, there, there's two problems with it. This configuration problem. And also um, if, you, if you take the name of the original function 
uh, and the length, uh, when you rewrap it, uh, you would have to cache those original ones when the function was originally wrapped and copy those from the wrapper, oh. uh, or else you would be able to observe when you rewrap. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, in the same uh, in the same line, when you have like, if you just re, uh, wrap the, the target function, the original function, um, one of the things here, it makes more sense for me to just reuse the name or, of the target. So you don't have special treatment. Like if you're, uh, let's say, if you're wrapping it for the first time, you give a prefix, but then if you wrap it again, you get the target, but now it's like uh, you remove, this consider the wrapped because you, you cannot account for that. So well, you, in this case, I don't think the prefix is uh, helpful at all. Like I, I would be interested in not having a prefix. That's what I was uh, gonna raise as well. Yeah. yeah. So the, um, I, I can try to give an example. Like let's say in Realm A, uh, you have um, a function named uh, do something. Uh, and you receive it in Realm B as wrapped do something. Uh, when you send it back to realm A, uh, you can just call it again, uh, uh, wrapped do something, but uh, everything would be like okay-ish, but this is user configurable. So let's go again uh, on like on realm A, you have a function that is called uh, do like my original uh, function name is called wrap do something else. It's not actually a wrapped function. I, I, there's actually a bigger problem with the renaming, uh, which is again, observability. So um, if in realm A it's do something, you send it to realm B, uh, it's wrap do something. Realm B overrides that name uh, to set it to, uh, well, do something else and removes wrap. Uh, when you, if we go by Mark's suggestion of uh, looking yeah. at the original name, uh, it shouldn't be the case to be able to ob observe the original name again. Uh, you yeah. should be yeah. able to uh, yeah. get the wrap over over old name. Yeah, yeah. You no, should not trigger the has on property and get on the name. No, that's, all of these are, are possible to do uh, with Mark's suggestion. It's just to, it's, it becomes very convoluted. Yeah, yeah. So, no, that's, the, the, these are good points. The, I guess I guess it wasn't uh, exactly the same as what I was going to bring up, which is um, never prefixing. So if you just copy the name, copy the length. It's an it's an own property on the wrapper. If you wrap it again, then you're going to get the same data unless it's been modified. So there's no special trickery. You just read the property and make a copy of it on the new value. Uh, is, is there, can anybody recall why we prefixed bound functions? Okay, I might have been the only person of us who was there at the time, uh, and I don't remember. Um, I have no, I would like us to see if we can find out what, what the rationale was for prefixing bound functions. Uh, but in the absence of a surprise there, uh, I think I agree. Uh, I don't see any particular reason to insist on the wrapping. However, on the lifetime issue that Matthew brought up, now that we've discussed it, I think the lifetime issue should allow the implementation to shorten regardless uh, in terms of not keeping the intermediate wrapping around, because after creation, even if the, we're, we're taking the name from the intermediate wrapping, uh, once we've created it, there's no reason for the, for the second wrapper to keep the first wrapper around. So implementations will in fact, at least sometimes drop the first wrapper if only the second wrapper is being retained. Uh, and we'd like the spec to reflect the shorter lifetime that implementations will actually want to implement. Um, 
so I still think that creating a wrapper of the original function, but using the name and length from the wrapper at creation time is still uh, something we should transition to. So basically you want to make in spec uh, something that was an, an observable in the first place and that engines would have been able to do. Yes, that it's, that it's un, un, unobservable aside from weak ref. Um, and no, uh, because weak... the, the realm itself is never uh, observable directly to, uh, is it? Yeah, the realm is. Mm. No, I, I, it doesn't. It does it, it whether the no the thing is um, if you drop the wrap if if you if you have function f you have a wrapping of it called wf uh, and then you have a wrapping of the wrapping of it called wwf and then only wwf is reachable from roots uh, then a weak ref on wf uh, should will in some implementations say the WF has been collected because nothing needs to retain it. But, and, th and therefore the spec should not imply that retaining WWF causes WF to be retained. But that w, WF, that single WF only exists in uh, the uh, intermediate realm. Um, it, cannot be, it, it cannot be a weak rep that exists in another uh, shadow realm to it. Uh, I don't understand what the significance of that is. In any realm, you can cre create weak refs. Right. And you, you can... wouldn't be able to get a reference to that WF. You're only able to get a wrapped reference to it. <laughs> no, I mean, inside the realm in which WF itself exists, you can create a weak reference to it. Right. But if that's the only thing holding. Oh, I see. No, okay. in. in, right. in, in, in you've, got, okay. yeah, you've, got, you've got realms A, B, and C with. with F, W, F, and W, W, F, respectively. In, in uh, A, you create a weak reference to F. In B, you create a weak reference to W, F. In C, you create a weak reference to W, W, F. W, W, F is reachable from roots. Which weak, which, which weak references are allowed to report um, that uh, the thing has been collected? I would argue only the weak reference created in realm B. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I am as that. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so I, I just want to make sure we also uh, have time for the next topic. Can I, um, I think it's pretty clear uh, we, we, we don't want the prefix. Uh, I, think it, uh, I think this is a consensus, uh, at least in, in this SAS meeting. Yes. Well, I, 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 the reason I, I, found is, uh, is too con convincing, but. I, I, I only want to, to add to, to you know, maintain the qualifier that somebody should take a look at what the rationale is for the bound prefix. Sure. Um, and uh, is that okay to establish the, the wrapped function name will just copy the, uh, the name from the target uh, once. And uh, I, we're gonna have another, uh, another topic to discuss uh, reusing the target from a wrapped function. Uh, but I think for now, like for what we want on, on the name and length, um, the only special treatment for name and length is only capturing name and length if, uh, as long as they are respectively a string and, an, uh, and a number. Sounds good to me. Good. Um, okay, so the next topic, uh, that I wanted to share is that Rick and uh, Karidi has found uh, some uh, use cases internally, but also like this has been uh, requested by Matthew uh, before, like what we should we do with uh, shared array buffers? And, Not just the others. Uh, actually, I was yes. in the one uh, that raised the array buffer uh, issue in the, in the first place. Y yeah, I remember you as one of the, the, the people who uh, Early advocated uh, for for that, uh, at, at least for this topic to be discussed, and uh, Karidi and uh, Rick they uh, took some time to to develop uh, about ideas, 
and we discuss internally, um, we, uh, we have some similarities as well in the web with like web workers, you can actually send shared array buffer, you, you get a new shared array buffer created in the, other, uh, in the worker uh, containing the same uh, target internal, the same, in, uh, the same buffer. Um, there is a difference though. Uh, one of the things that I'm not strongly compelled uh, about what they have for workers is that they actually do the whole structure cloning that she wants to bring, um, oh, see So yeah, uh, on, on structured cloning, let me just say that I, I, there, there's, I um, made a lot of comments on the, I think it was on a GitHub thread on that. Um, uh, in any case, it was at a public place. I'm pretty sure it was on the GitHub thread. Uh, uh, structured clone as it's currently specced uh, is incompatible with JavaScript and cannot, and can never enter the JavaScript language uh, without, major observable changes to the spec. Yeah, and, and I, I am yet finding no reasons right now for structural cloning because that would require a lot of complexity for a simple thing that we need to do. Uh, the current uh, per request, uh, the current proposal for this change is having shared the rate buffer, uh, like a special treatment. Uh, if we evaluate uh, a code from a, from a shadow realm, um, or sending, like using a wrapped function, sending a shared array buffer, like sending a shared array buffer uh, across realms. Um, you observe that object has a array buffer internal, and then you uh, confirm that array buffer is a shared array buffer. Um, you, instead of doing a structural cloning, you create a new shared array buffer in the other realm containing the same, uh, the equivalent or the respective internals of the shared array buffer. That way you have a special treatment, but uh, for some native JavaScript functionality, you could not do otherwise. Um, and the main difference from workers is that you don't have structural cloning. So you don't have any copy of the, the, the actual properties of the object instance. You just have a new shared array buffer. You don't even consider subclassing or anything. You just have a new shared array buffer there with the internals. What about array buffer? Uh, it's currently blocked to array buffer. For workers, there is more uh, functionality for, for workers because you kind of like need to detach uh, the array buffer. And I'm not touching that point yet. So I'm, my per request is currently just working with shared array buffers. Um, so have... <laughs> Have uh, you and Kerity looked at uh, my uh, alternative proposal? Uh, not much. That's one of the things I, I actually uh, I asked Kerity. There's been an accompany uh, wide thing happening this week. I'm just not attending right now because I'm actually changing teams as well. Just news to everyone. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I'm not in this. Uh, so let me try to sum up uh, the, the guest I wrote on uh, on this. It's it's in the agenda. I'll uh, post it here again. Um, yeah. My concern with uh, your approach is that it introduces uh, a precedent uh, for implicitly allowing some non-primitive uh, and non-callable through uh, the callable boundary. Uh, and it's also a precedent, it's also a solution that doesn't solve for every type of uh, more complex object that, that may want to be shared. Uh, array buffer being uh, an, explicit, an explicit example, where array buffer has, um, if you want to transfer from one realm to another, you have to explicitly uh, express your intent to detach it and, uh, and no longer want to use it. Um, so this simply passing as an argument uh, to a callable it doesn't leave any place to uh, to express that intent, uh, and that's why I believe an implicit, um, which is basically a simple uh, clone, uh, is not the right approach in my opinion. Uh, I. My proposal is for an explicit clone. Uh, it's not a structured clone. Uh, however, it is 
uh, API compatible for now to eventually possibly build up to a something similar to um, structure clone in a way that would satisfy Mark's um, uh, issues about uh, breaking JavaScript, uh, current JavaScript invariants. Um, so I, um, it also allows this to be virtualizable and uh, completely, and, and that can be completely extended uh, by user land to uh, add new clonable types if it wants to, as long as it works in uh, tangents with um, the callable boundary. Uh, so we would have to also virtualize the Shadow Realm instance, the Shadow Realm constructor at the same time to make sure it creates a Shadow Realm that has um, the same type of cloners that can be recognized on the other side. Um, so, I mean, this is not unlike what a membrane on top of a uh, callable boundary would do in any way in the first place. Yeah. Um, okay, so we discussed that. I, I brought that to, to Rick and Karidi's attention. I think they had a conclusion and, and they observed that and they discussed that, I can tell you that. Unfortunately, I cannot bring you like the, the actual conclusion about it because I, I'm sorry, I don't remember. And uh, they should be more on the technical details of that, but it's unfortunate we also have this uh, company-wide event. Um, um, yeah, but, but I still, what I can tell, and this is just like not enough for, for a discussion, but it's, uh, they still prefer going through that route uh, as like, for for simplicity they can give more details i i agree it's more simple for now but it really introduces a precedent that i'm not comfortable with um one of the things for this precedent for introducing this precedent it's actually i think this precedent would be similar to what mark said uh like if does have, have a, a special treatment for uh, for any kind of object you do the same treatment for wrapped like if you just reuse the target of a wrapped function, yeah, you observe the internal. Like, is this a wrapped? Uh, is this a wrapped function? Um, so you reuse that uh, the target. It's not quite the same though, because uh, this we're talking about the callable boundary recognizing other things. We're instead of the callable boundary recognizing its own things. Yeah. Um, there might be, yeah. Where the, the callable boundary recognizing its own things can be virtualized again because you can just return a function that recognizes its own wrapped things. Um, so you can always wrap yourself. You cannot, you cannot introduce a hook that would wrap uh, the recognition of something else. Um, funny enough, you bring, uh, uh, I'm starting to think about one thing. I believe this pull request is actually creating a new array buffer in the other realm. And this new array buffer is actually getting the intrinsic shared array buffer and creating a new instance. So even if you virtualize everything, you get an instance of uh, an actual shared array buffer. So if you don't treat that, you could probably have access. So you already have that with wrapped functions anyway. So the membranes would need to handle those too. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I was just traveling, uh, letting my you, mind travel here through yeah, what we received in the other realm. Are you saying that uh, if you had denied the shared array uh, buffer constructor in the other realm, uh, you would in, that introduces a way to reintroduce it? No, it doesn't introduce anything. If we, when you create a wrapped function, you already have some sort of um, access to the function that prototype like you have access to intrinsic so if you don't treat that uh, the wrapped function uh, it's kind of like right you, you already have this with wrapped function so we're having a shared array buffer if you create a new shared array buffer using the intrinsics which you're going to have access to to the intrinsics of uh, to the intrinsics in the other realm the other realm also needs to to give some treatment to that received shared array buffer. 
um, so that it's not. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. It was just like lowly thinking here. Okay, I, I I'm not following it. When you talk about it, intrinsics, are you you're talking about the 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 same thing that we sometimes call primordials, just the pre-existing original object? Yes. And what's the significance of that? I, I'm not understanding that. Uh, I was just thinking, like in, in my case, in my current proposal, if I transfer a shared array buffer, the other uh, realm receives an actual shared array buffer, and not something that I've virtualized on top. So it still needs treatment in the other realm. Um, let's say, like uh, I replace the global shared array buffer name with something else. But when oh, I transfer I a shared array buffer, it still use the original shared array buffer. Okay. Okay. Um, so what, what? So what did you mean by treatment? My treatment is if, like, if I have a virtualized environment, uh, I if see. I have any control, if I replace the shared array buffer, I need to account like for these received values. I cannot just expose to the user. I see. Direct. Okay. There I got is, it. However, a function, uh, the function. Uh, prototype, which you would be able to uh, to get at through the wrap function, uh, is undeniable. Where the shared array buffer uh, constructor and prototype are deniable. Well, the wrap function, yeah. If you like, a, still, if you're exposing the wrap function to a user, you cannot expose it directly because they they still have access to to function prototype. That's the thing, like. Shared array buffer is not creating a new precedent on this part, on actually exposing the primordials because uh, wrapped functions already has access to the primordials. But, but as I say, wrapped functions are, uh, like the function prototype is undeniable. You can always get at it through syntax where you cannot get at uh, the uh, shared array buffer uh, prototype uh, through syntax, you can deny the uh, the global constructor, and then that realm would never have access to it. And now you, you've re, you've introduced a way of just bypassing that object as an argument from another realm. Uh, introduce a way to uh, show that again. I, I mean, it, it's it might be fine because it's the action of another realm onto uh, onto the cold realm, or well, to to basically. It's like you were. It, 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 my problem is that it's somewhat implicit that you're. Uh, giving access not just to that object but also to uh, its prototype and constructor and in my but you're not you're not giving access I think in both cases like both in your proposal my proposal uh, you you receive a new shared array buffer from that realm so you don't have any access to to the to the, the other realm from this new instance you just have the buffer inside as a target yeah I uh, Yes, um, the, the difference is that ultimately I want to work up the uh, cloner idea to a, a place where uh, it would be extensible uh, so that if someone goes in and virtualizes um, shared array buffers, uh, they're able to recreate a virtualized uh, instance on, on the other side. Um, so, um, and and this is this is this is where I'm concerned by by creating an implicit um, an implicit precedent. So just to to, to uh, be very pedantic uh, about the term undeniability, uh, it it is the case in you know uh, that quite often um, you know one internal method will refer to. Um, intrinsics, and therefore, if that internal method um, uh, were to be, uh, you know, uh, observably called, then the intrinsic it refers to might be undeniable. But we don't. Um, but uh, but then whether whether the undeniability follows depends on whether uh, that internal method uh, itself is uh, undeniable. Uh, or undeniably called. So um, uh, the uh, so I think in this case yeah. it's not technically undeniable because one can replace the realm constructor and replace the you know just replace enough stuff as to deny the original um, uh, array buffer prototype. So technically it's not undeniable, 
Uh, but practically, uh, you know, uh, whether, you know, is it undeniable enough for Matthew's point to be a practical reason to avoid doing this? And I don't have an opinion on that yet. Um, the, uh, I, I will also say, by the way, that with regard to um, Matthew's extensible um, uh, cloner, uh, uh, Matthew and I had a long, long discussion on this last night that did not come to a conclusion. So I want to present the following as a possible alternative to be discussed as opposed to a position that I'm convinced of or anything like that, uh, which is that the cloner that's, that's built in as a new primitive that the spec provides uh, just be a, the most pr primitive and limited cloner to do the things that you can't do in user code. And that would be to clone array buffer, uh, shared array buffer, uh, and possibly some very, very small number of select other special objects for which there's a compelling case that you can't do in user code. Uh, what I have in mind specifically is um, a static module record. Uh, and that the built-in cloner uh, uh, copy, clone, probably we re, 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 rename it to something else, but it, it not clone anything else, including simple objects and simple arrays. Uh, uh, and in that sense, the built-in mechanism uh, uh, to become something like a cloner needs to be extended by user code. So everything that can be done by user code must be done by user code to have something that seems to be a cloner. And this is consistent with the philosophy we've already taken in Shadow Realms that the call boundary is providing almost nothing from membrane functionality, uh, but it provides the minimal uh, uh, primitive functionality that you need so that all of the rest of the membrane can be built in user code. I think, I think that it's at least plausible that we should follow that philosophy with regard to cloning as well. So, um, Mark uh, and, and Matt too, uh, I, I'd like to make it clear, uh, I'm all posit positive. And my, my goal is to find like the success path for all of us to, to move Shadow, Helm, uh, Shadow Realms forward. Um, I, my personal note is just that Matthew's uh, approach is a little bit over complex. Uh, please take it with a grain of salt. I, of course, like I, I have some preference for the simplicity, but I also understand like the reasons as you're putting down here, some, some of the reasons. Although my personal note is, doesn't mean anything. I, I need uh, Karidi and Rick and I'm gonna uh, send to, to, to them like a notice like, uh, I'm gonna ask them to reveal again and try to, to capture all of these um, and, and consider like, uh, how is that option also like workable for us? What, what we want, the, the goal at the end is having a functionality for a shared array buffer across realms. Uh, if that's workable, I think they can still use that approach and I'm, I'll be positive. I'm gonna try that. Yeah. So let me say for shared array buffers, uh, uh, Leo's uh, perspective, I think, is plausible if we take shared array buffers by themselves as the, um, as the problem case. Uh, likewise, for shared array buffers plus static module records, uh, the, the one that creates the show stopping problem for me uh, that's along the lines of Matthew's objection is array buffer. And the reason why array buffer is the problem case is that um, uh, because it's an ownership transfer, the original loses its functionality. The original becomes a, what, what's, what's the name for it? A not truncated. Detached. Detached, thank you. The original becomes detached. Uh, whereas for shared array buffers or anything else, just going through the call, you know, for shared array buffers, uh, and all the things that currently go over shared array buffers, um, I'm sorry, the go over the call boundary like functions. Uh, and if we added static, static module records, um, that all of those things, the original has no loss of functionality. So having it simply encounter a membrane and having it get shared on the other side 
uh, does not cause a local surprise. Detaching is a local surprise, and that's where Matthew's objection that there has to be some uh, expression of intent, uh, I think, has a lot of force. And just as a uh, also as another note, um, Shu himself asked for for this topic to be a follow up proposal and not a stage three. I think for what we are discussing here and like not having a final conclusion, as like we we continue to investigate, I think it's reasonable to have this as a follow up and not block stage four. Oh, I I completely agree. I I. It... I, I didn't even know that that incorporating this in the existing proposal was being considered. Yeah, in this case, like for name and length, we want we want it for stage three, as right. we believe it's a gap to the specs. But for shared array buffer, I think it's pretty reasonable as a follow up. I agree. So I think Perfect. this is a good place to draw the this meeting. Um, the the does, does anybody object to closing uh, closing on this note? I'm good. All right, awesome. I will, um, I, please stick around after we stop recording. I have one question. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Thanks. That's a that's a call.